Hey everyone, so today I'm going to be testing out some new makeup products. I'm excited because I haven't filmed a video like this in a little while, but I wanted to try out the products that I picked up during the Sephora Spring Savings event. And then I also got a few things in the mail as PR that I thought I would try out in today's video as well. So I'm doing two separate videos. I'm going to do a drugstore version and then a high-end version because I have a lot of products. So today's video is the high-end version. We'll see which products are worth the money. I'm going to start with this product from Merit. This is a new launch. They came out with four different shades. These are their tinted lip oils. So I did try the original version. I have the shade Marrakesh that I got as part of like a Sephora favorite set and I, I just wasn't a big fan. I felt like it wore off very, very quickly and I also felt like it dried my lips out once that initial glossy layer wore off. So I don't know if this is going to be the same formula or it's going to be different. I know that these are sheer, so they're not going to give you a ton of color. I have the shade Mapleton, which I don't know, it's kind of different on the lips than it looks in the packaging. Actually, maybe not. I feel like the color is pretty accurate. It's a very, very sheer formula. And this feels like a true lip oil. Like I feel like everyone is marketing everything as a lip oil these days. And sometimes it feels like a lip oil, sometimes it feels like a lip gloss. This feels like a very lightweight lip oil. I did get this product in the mail from Kosas, so I thought I would try it out. I'm not on their PR list. I don't think I've ever gotten PR from them in the past. I'm pretty sure, but I did get this product and it is a sunscreen, so I thought I would try it out. Kosas is very hit and miss for me. There are products I love, like the concealer, the brow gel, but the majority of the products don't end up working out for me, like the bronzer, the powder, the foundation, so we'll see how this goes. This is described as a clean, silicone-free, comfy mineral sunscreen packed with ceramides and peptides. So it's supposed to moisturize and then also smooth and brighten the skin, and it's supposed to create the dreamiest makeup base. So it says you can use it on its own or along with products. This is what the little applicator looks like, which is nice because I feel like you get more control. So let's just apply it and see how it goes. I'm going to use this as my sunscreen, obviously, but also as my primer today. It definitely has a sunscreen scent to it, but it is tinted, which I saw on Instagram, so it's not supposed to leave a really intense white cast because it does have zinc oxide, 21.7% zinc oxide, which generally that can leave a pretty strong white cast. And there's definitely a glow to it. It feels really nice. It feels like I'm applying a moisturizing, glowy base. I'm just really working this into my skin. I'm sure I'll cut just a little bit of this out, but when I apply sunscreen, I like to make sure that it is very evenly applied. I usually do apply about two layers just to make sure I'm applying enough product. Okay, so this is what it looks like on the skin. I think it looks really pretty. It's not over the top glowy. I used a good amount of this. I started with like two finger lengths of the product and then I went in and added more because I was curious to know how it layered and I felt like it did absorb into the skin. Like it didn't feel like it was just spreading on my skin. It felt like it went on almost more like a moisturizer. My skin does have a glow to it, but it's not over the top. It's not like a metallic sheen like I get with some other glowy SPFs. So far I like it. It is an expensive SPF, it's $40. You get 1.4 fluid ounces. So if you're using enough of this product and you're using it every single day, you'll probably go through it fairly quickly. But I do tend to usually have like a couple of different options on rotation, depending on how I'm doing my makeup, if I'm wearing makeup, which foundation I'm using. So if I like the way this wears under makeup, it might be more of a formula I use if I am wearing makeup that day. It might be a nice option to pair with more of a matte foundation, but I do feel like $40 is a lot for a daily SPF. For foundation, I am using the Fenty Pro Filter Soft Matte Longwear Foundation. I have the shade 150. Now I know this is not everyone's favorite foundation by any means. I did repurchase this during the Sephora sale. It is something that I've been using fairly often these days because it is a true long wearing foundation. It is a matte full coverage foundation, but I find that if I wear it on top of a glowy base like this Kosas product or um, like the e.l.f. Power Grip Primer, it's not quite as intense as when you wear it over like a matte base. Now this color does look a little bit light on camera, but I promise in real life it is a perfect shade match. Anyway, I think I told you guys in my Sephora haul, I kind of fell back in love with this one and I think it's because I have been using more of a glowy or hydrating base with it. And I like the fact that it stays in place all day long. When I wear makeup, I'm just not someone who really wants to take the time to touch it up. Even if I'm like out for a few hours and then I come home for a few hours and I go back out, I don't usually want to 
have to like run in and touch up certain spots. Once my makeup is on for the day, I just wanna leave it and not worry about it with the exception of lip products. I feel like I usually will go in and reapply my lip product, that's not an issue, but my base products, I don't wanna have to worry about them. And I like the fact that this foundation does stay in place all day. My camera cut out while I was blending and I don't remember exactly where I was at. I think I was just saying, I know it's not really trendy right now to use more long wearing full coverage products. I think makeup trends are really fun and I definitely like trying new things, but I'm just, I'm an all or nothing type of person when it comes to makeup. Either I'll skip makeup completely, I might go in with like a little bit of brow gel and mascara, but I'll skip it for the most part, or I'll go all out and create like more of a full coverage, full glam, long lasting look. By the way, I'm just using a little bit of the Milk Makeup Future Fluid All Over Cream Concealer, and I have the shade 5W. I'm using a Real Techniques brush. This is a deluxe crease brush, but I really like using it as a concealer brush. I'll make sure to link everything I'm using as well as all of the brushes. I'll list all of the brushes in the description box. For powder, I'm really excited to use this again. It's from Charlotte Tilbury. It is the Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder. I picked this up during the sale, and this has kind of been on my wish list for a little while. Like, I've been thinking about trying it again recently because I used to love this product back in the day. You know what? I think I'm actually going to use it with a little triangular puff. It has been years since I've used this product, and I don't know if I'm just remembering it as better than it was or if it's actually that good. So I thought I would pick it up again and try it out. I just remember making my under eyes look really, really smooth back in the day when I had it. Okay, so I have the powder on this side and not on this side. It looks really smooth, very, very even, just kind of like softly diffused, which is what I really want for under the eyes these days. I have fine lines under my eyes and I feel like some powders can make that area look worse. I also have fine lines between my brows. I feel like I'm getting a little bit more of a defined wrinkle in that area. No powder is like a complete miracle worker, but some powders I feel like tend to crease a little bit more quickly than others. Actually, I'm just going to set the entire center of my forehead. But yeah, that looks great. It looks very smooth, very even. I'm just going to take a little bit more on this side. You know, the Flower Beauty Light Illusion is similar, and I feel like that one does a great job, but I was just curious to try this again after all these years because I remember loving it so, so much. And honestly, I don't use quite as much powder these days as I used to back in the day, so I don't think I'll go through it quite as quickly. I'm just using this to set the center of my face, but I am going to go in with cream products, so I'll leave the rest of it for now. I'll come back to the cheeks and finish off the face in just a second, but I'm just going to apply the Glossier Boy Brow. I have the shade Brown, which I feel like works perfectly for me. This has been my favorite brow gel. I just think it makes such a difference. And I know I said earlier that I am kind of more of like an all or nothing person when it comes to makeup, but even if I'm not wearing base makeup, I usually will take the time just to run this brow gel through my brows because I think it makes such a difference. It is a very wet brow gel and I've had mine for a little while and I feel like it still hasn't dried out that much. So I do recommend just kind of scraping off any excess before going in. I forgot to do that today, but I love this formula so much. So I'm just going to give my brows a second to dry and then I'll go in and define them a little bit better. In the meantime, I am going to do the eyes. So I'm just using the Patrick Ta Major Dimension Palette, the first one. Mine is a little bit older. It is very much well-loved. I just wanna create a very simple eye look because the focus today is not the eyes. Actually, I don't know. I might go in with some false lashes, but I wanna keep the eyeshadow very soft, very natural. So I'm going to go in with this shade right here and just work that into the crease. I just wanna do a brown in the crease and then a light shimmer all over the lid. I already applied eyeshadow primer a little bit earlier and then set it into place. So we're just going to quickly throw on a few shadows. I actually haven't used this palette in a little while. Usually when it comes to the major dimension palettes, I go with the second one. That is one of my favorite palettes of all time. It just has such a pretty mix of shades. But I do love this palette when I want like a true neutral look. I feel like a lot of neutral palettes lean very rosy toned or they're extremely warm toned to the point where the shadows almost end up looking red or orange on the eyes. And I guess this one maybe has a couple of shades like that, but in general when I want just like a very simple neutral look, I'll reach for this palette because I feel like it's easy to create with it. I'm just going to take a little bit of this slightly deeper shade and work that into the crease as well. I'm currently listening to Remarkably Bright Creatures on Audible. This is by Shelby Van Pelt. 
I have 37 minutes left. It has been so good. I almost skipped this one. I think it was one of the like best sellers for the week or one of the recommendations. I've heard some people talk about it, but based on the description alone, I was like, eh, I don't know if I'm going to be into that one. One of the main characters is an octopus. So literally for that reason alone, I was like, ah, I think I'll skip that one. I did skip it for a little while. I finally decided to listen to it. It's been so good. So I do recommend this one. I'm almost done with it, but I can't imagine I'll change my mind in the last 37 minutes. Right before that, I listened to Lessons in Chemistry. That one was so interesting. And then I'm just going to take this shade right here all over the lid. Anyway, all that to say, I'm almost done with Remarkably Bright Creatures. So if you have any recommendations as to what I should listen to next, please let me know. This is not sponsored, by the way. I did work with Audible fairly recently, which was so so cool because I've been using Audible for years. I'm such a fan. So when they reached out, I was like, yes, absolutely. I would love to work together, but this is not sponsored. Like since I did that video, I've already listened to three additional books. I just love it. I feel like I've been going through books kind of quickly. I've been listening while I'm editing because here's the thing. If you film YouTube videos or film yourself in any capacity and then I have to go back and edit, it gets very exhausting listening to yourself over and over. When I edit a video, I usually end up watching it like a few times, but I've already like lived through it because I already filmed it. So I feel like I kind of drown myself out a little bit. So it's kind of nice to listen to an audiobook while I'm editing and just kind of have my voice more so in the background because I already know what I'm saying. I always forget that Shimmer Shadow almost has a little bit of like a creamy base to it. So I feel like it almost goes on like a ColourPop Super Shock. Actually, I do wanna apply a little bit of eyeliner. I recently picked up this Urban Decay 24-7 Ink Eyeliner in the shade Zero. The design is very interesting. It's supposed to be a little bit easier to hold. I love Urban Decay's Perversion Eyeliner. That one is my favorite. So I kind of wanted to put this one to the test, see if it's as good. I have a feeling, I don't know if this is true, I don't really have a reason to feel like this, but I almost feel like maybe they're going to discontinue Perversion now that they launched this one. That went on super easily, no issues whatsoever. It had like a very nice, smooth, even glide. So I'm very happy about that because if they do discontinue Perversion, at least they still make a great liner, although we'll see if it actually holds up throughout the day. I'm just taking this lightest shade in the palette for the brow bone, just to kind of smooth everything over. A few things. I think I am really needing some cheek products to bring this look to life. I do want to create like a very pink cheek and then very pink lips as well, because I feel like it's starting to look just a little bit dull. I am going to use this pencil for Melt. I got this a long time ago on Flip. It is the Slick Waterline Eye Pencil, and this one is in the shade Ivory. I have a light nude pencil from LA Girl that I like, but that one has like shimmer in it. Whoa. This one is very creamy, very intense. Like the second I touched it to my waterline, it showed up. That went on so easily. Like that is definitely one of the creamiest eyeliners I've ever tried because of that I don't know if it's going to last, so let me just put it on the back of my hand, let it dry down for a second, and we'll see. I also really like Too Faced Killer Cashmere. That one's a great option. Not quite as creamy as this one, but that one stays in place so well. Okay, before I get into the mascara, I also wanted to say the lip oil did wear off. It's been a little while. It's been longer than the actual video because I do cut out parts of me just kind of sitting here or finding products or getting up to do something. They do still feel pretty moisturized, which is different than the original Merit lip oil formula I tried. The tinted one really dried my lips out. So this one feels okay, but it's not super long lasting because it is a true lip oil. Okay, the eyeliner has had a second to dry. Mm, it just completely went away as soon as I ran my finger over it. So I don't have high hopes this is actually going to last on the waterline. I don't know, it hasn't faded yet though, so we'll see, I'll keep you posted. But usually if it's that creamy and it doesn't dry down completely, it's probably not going to stay in place super well on the waterline, especially because I do have watery eyes. Okay, let's finally get to the mascara. I have two different mascaras, so I think I might actually try out both of them. I was just going to use one, but honestly, why not try both? The first one is from Fenty, it's the Hella Thick Volumizing Mascara. So I think I'll use that on my right eye, and then on my left eye, I'll use this one from Ami Colet. This one is the, I think it's called the, yeah, the Lash Amplifying Mascara. This one is supposed to add volume and length. So just based on that, I feel like the Fenty one might add more volume, whereas the Ami Colet one might be better for lengthening the lashes. 
but we will see. I might actually go in with false lashes today. That was maybe my plan, but if these mascaras do a good job, I'll skip them. Okay, so initially the Fenty one is going on really, really nicely. You know what this reminds me of? The new Flower Beauty Dream Warrior mascara. I really like that one. That one makes my lashes look really thick, but also very, very fluttery. Anyway, here is one coat of the mascara. I think it did a really good job. It definitely added volume. There's not a ton of length, but I am going to build it up and see if I can get there. It does seem like the type of formula that's going to build really, really easily. Okay, here's what the Fenty mascara looks like on the lashes. I have like two coats on the upper lashes, one coat on the bottom lashes. I think it looks dramatic. Like there's a lot of volume. There's also length. It definitely builds, but I do think it has a tendency to look a little bit clumpy. Like my lashes are not completely separated. I feel like they look slightly clumpy, but I also think it looks pretty dramatic. Like there is a good amount of volume, a good amount of length as well. So as long as you don't mind a little bit of clumping, I feel like this could be a good option. We'll see how it actually holds up throughout the day. So I do wanna use the other mascara on the other eye, and I do think this one might be a little more lengthening based on the actual wand. Okay, so I have one coat on. Initial impressions, this is definitely more of a length lengthening formula like I thought it might be. It's going on nicely. I feel like there's also some volume. This wand definitely it combs through the lashes a little bit better, so I don't think it's going to look as clumpy on the eyes, but I still think I'll be able to get a good amount of drama. Okay, so both mascaras have had the chance to dry. Here's what they look like. This side is Fenty, this side is Mikolay. I don't know, I'm thinking maybe Fenty, but I, I like the way this one applied just a little bit better but I feel like the end result, maybe the Fenty side is a little bit more lifted and curled while they both have volume and length. So let me know what you think. I'll let you know how they wear because that will definitely play a part into which one I recommend. Okay, let's move on to the cheeks. So I am going to be using a new bronzer. This is not a brand new launch, it's just new to me. It's the Say Sun Melt Natural Cream Bronzer and I have the shade Light Bronze. I am so excited to try this out. This has kind of been on my wish list for a little while at this point. I've been wanting to try it. I just, I feel like I've gone and tried other formulas before this one. So I'm going to use this e.l.f. Complexion Duo Brush and we'll see how it applies. Someone is mowing. I'm not sure if you'll hear it. We live in a neighborhood where a lot of people are retired and a lot of people have young families. So I feel like everyone in our neighborhood is just outside all the time, which honestly is kind of fun. But during the spring and the summer, I feel like there are just nonstop lawnmowers going. Okay, this is going on nicely. It's definitely subtle, which when I swatched this, I just had a feeling it was going to be very natural on the skin, which is kind of what I prefer day to day. I... I think in my haul video I was swatching it and it sheared out nicely. So I thought it might be a little bit more natural than the Makeup by Mario bronzer, which I love, but that one has a good amount of pigment to it. And sometimes you just want something a little bit softer. Okay, I just got up to look in different lighting. I think it looks really good on the skin. It looks very natural. I think the shade and the undertone really are perfect for my skin tone, but the actual formula is nice because it's not overly dewy. I do love a good dewy bronzer. I'm thinking specifically of the Makeup Revolution one, but this one looks very skin-like. I'm tempted to skip blush and just kind of leave it how it is and maybe even skip highlighter because I like just like the natural bronze, but I do want to do like a, a pink cheek and a pink lip. So this is from Makeup by Mario. It is the Soft Pop Blush Stick and I have the shade Pale Petal. So I'm just going to apply this directly to the brush. I'm, I'm kind of nervous to wear this one because honestly, like when I saw it online, I thought it was a little bit softer than it actually is in person. I swatched this in my haul video and I was kind of surprised by how pink it was. That looks pretty. I just kind of tapped the excess off on the back of my hand because I do think this blush has a good amount of pigment to it. The bronzer does, so I kind of figured the blush would be the same exact way. But it's definitely more pink than I thought it was going to be based on the online photos. I think online it looks just not quite as intense, but I thought this color, like after swatching it in my haul video, I thought the color could be really fun for spring and summer. It's pretty, there's a little bit of a glow to it. I don't know, I kind of liked the makeup look better before I applied the blush, but I feel like maybe once I apply the pink lips, it will all tie together. The actual formula is nice, it went on very easily, 
but I don't know. I was kind of feeling like just the bronzer. Anyway, I'm going to take a little bit of this Rare Beauty highlighter. This one is in the shade Mesmerize. This one is like the pinky bronzy shade, like the bronzy rose shade that I picked up during the sale. So I just kind of went over it a little bit with whatever was left on my foundation brush. And then I applied some concealer to that freckle on my nose just to create more of a seamless look. So for the lips, I'm going to take the Charlotte Tilbury Lip Cheat. This is in the shade Pillow Talk. I haven't used this in a while. I feel like I need to sharpen mine. But I just want to define my lips a little bit before I go in with the gloss. So this is from Amicole. It is the Lip Treatment Oil in the shade Smitten, which is a really pretty pink. I think it's going to be pretty sheer, just based on what it looked like when I swatched it. Okay, it actually has a lot more pigment than I thought. So it's an interesting formula. I feel like it's going to stay in place fairly well because I wouldn't call it sticky, but there is almost a little bit of like, I guess the thickness to it. So it does make my lips look super smooth. I love the way it looks. It feels good too, but it is a little bit thicker, almost like the Kaja lip glosses if you've tried those. So it's pretty. I like it a lot. I feel like you could wear it on its own without a lip liner. I feel like it would look really nice over a lipstick as well. So I do feel like this one is going to stay in place a lot longer than the Merit Lip Oil. I'll do a speed reviews video for you in a few weeks once I've had a chance to test everything out really thoroughly. So I'll come back and let you guys know what I think about the products. But first impressions, I really do like this Say bronzer. I feel like this is going to be a new go-to. It just looks so nice on the skin. It's very easy to apply. It looks really nice natural. I love the color, the tone, the finish. So I'm really excited to keep using this, especially on days where I do want a little bit more of a minimal makeup look, like just a base with a little bit of bronzer, maybe a little highlighter, but I feel like it could be a perfect option for like those summer bronzy looks. Honestly, I do like this sunscreen. It went on really nicely. Like it gave my skin a little bit of a glow without being over the top and it just feels good. Like some sunscreens you apply them and they instantly irritate the skin or they're like overly glowy and your skin looks greasy. That's not how this one looks or feels. So I'm definitely curious to keep trying it. The only thing is it's expensive. It's $40 for 1.4 fluid ounces. So I feel like it is something I might go through kind of quickly compared to other sunscreens that come with more product, but we'll see. The Urban Decay eyeliner went on really nicely. It's not quite as intense as Perversion, but I didn't have any issues with it. Like it's very smooth, very even. It's not as dark as Perversion, but I feel like it's it doesn't flow out as fast. So you can get more of a precise application, which is nice. I don't know, this Melt Eyeliner is still in place. It hasn't smeared or smudged at all. I just feel like based on the swatch, it isn't going to last, but I'll let you know. If it lasts, that would be amazing because it did go on really easily. The mascaras both look good. I don't know that either one of them are going to be my new go-to formulas. I feel like they didn't, you know, wow me as much as other formulas I've tried. Like sometimes when I'm doing like a first impressions with mascara, I instantly fall in love with it, but I don't know that I see myself reaching for these over like the Tower 28 mascara, the new Flower Beauty one, the Milani anti-gravity one but I think they both look nice. So we'll see how they actually hold up. I'm not sold on the Makeup by Mario blush stick. I just feel like maybe the shade isn't ideal for me. I do like the formula. I don't know, it's just, it's a lot more vibrant than I thought it was going to be. And I have pink blushes, but maybe this one is just slightly too pink. I don't know, I'll keep playing around with it and see. I think the formula is good. I just don't know about the shade. And then as for the lip products, the Merit Lip Oil, very, very lightweight, like a true lip oil that isn't going to last more than like an hour. But my lips did feel pretty good after it wore off. You're just not going to get longevity out of this product or really a lot of color. It's very, very subtle. The Ami Kalei one does feel more like a true lip gloss. It looks very pretty, it's super smooth, but you know what? There is a little bit of a sticky feel to it. So if you don't like sticky lip products, skip over it. It doesn't feel like a lip oil. To me, this one feels more like a traditional lip gloss. So just kind of depends on what you're going for, but I do think it is a pretty shade and it does make my lips look super smooth, really shiny. So those are all of the new products. Everything else is something I've tried and I really enjoy, but this is the final look. I feel like I had a little bit of trouble with the blush, so it's not quite as like smooth and seamless as I would have liked it to be. But in the end, it kind of came together. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Let me know in the comments below if you've tried these products, what you think of them. I'll definitely do a speed reviews video very soon and give you some updated reviews once I've had the chance to use everything a little bit more. And I'll see you very soon with a new video. Bye.